Hi, this is Charlie Montefiello with Blue Bear Flutes. Of course, you can find us on BlueBearFlutes.com as well as just about all over the web, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, everywhere under Blue Bear Flutes. Of course, Pinterest, I shouldn't mention that one. I always forget to mention Pinterest. Anyway, uh, today what we're talking about is a kind of a simple topic that people in all walks of woodworking find uh, difficulty in. And it's something that I think everybody could benefit from learning how to do it. I learned how to do it from someone who had been work woodworking all of his life, who learned it from someone who had been work woodworking all of his life. Now, the good thing is the types of materials we use these days have improved. Unlike a lot of things in the world, this side of the, the business has gone up, so which is great. Um, but I'm going to show you some cracks that are in wood that are natural, and some of them I can show you what they're caused by. Um, many times you can tell that they're caused by either like a, a blow or a, a break or just simply by a knot, which is usually what it is. So uh, what I'm going to do is show you how to repair some of those cracks really quick. Now, we make Native American flutes and other wooden musical instruments, but honestly you can use this in any kind of uh, woodworking, furniture making, furniture repairs, or just if you need to repair some kind of furniture at home. So take a look at what we've got here. This is a flute blank that we, we make. And the flute blank looks pretty good. It needs some cleaning up, which we usually do before they're put together. This is a knot hole, though, and this knot has a pit inside of it. And, of course, there's some cracks where the knot is separating. If I run this knot on this blank through my planer to make it thinner as I need to, because it needs to be about an eighth of an inch thinner, um, it'll smooth that off a little bit, but it'll also peel it up and break it. So one thing that I do to keep that from happening is put just a little super glue around the edges of the, the knot. Uh, that's the first thing you want to do. That way you can observe and, and see if it soaks into it. And you can see it's starting to soak down the side here a little bit. So obviously the knot is a little loose. We'll go ahead and, and do this to the whole seam of the knot. And depending on how much it soaks up, will determine whether or not I feel like I need to clamp this. But it's not soaking it up too much, so probably not going to clamp it. There is a crack there on the side of the knot. Now the thing about working with knots in wood, they are a natural part of the wood. However, they evaporate water and soak up water differently than the rest of the wood does. And because of this, and the temperature change difference between a very hard knot and a very soft piece of wood, is, uh, is quite different how the uh, temperature change of the outside ambient temperature will affect one over the other. So if it gets a little cold, this here might shrink faster than this does, or vice versa. Or when it gets hot, this might expand quicker than this does, or vice versa. So putting the super glue on it seals it from any moisture soaking into it and helps to kind of stabilize it as super glue, um, or cyanocrinic glue, or uh, crazy glue, there's a number of words for it, is very thin, viscous, and can soak and penetrate into just about anything. So that's a good way to seal a knot so that after it dries, you won't have any problem. We can go back and plane this, and it shouldn't fly out. 99.9% .9 of the time, it shouldn't fly out. Now here's the other half of this blank, and obviously I've just been sitting it there for a while in hopes of doing this repair, but this knot has some obvious cracks. It's not breaking, and this side here to the naked eye just looks like, you know, some rough looking wood where I can tell that it's soft around the outside of this, which means at the life stage of this particular plant, that bit of wood there was starting to not necessarily decompose, but it was on its way. It would be doing that sometime in the next few years, maybe, um, left, if left in its natural environment. Now, having said that, the inside of the knot here has already started cracking. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put some of the super glue in it. This is a very liquid brand of super glue. You can use any kind. I recommend getting something a little more expensive rather than a little less expensive. And if you do this often and you're concerned with price, experiment with a couple of them and find out which one works best for you. That's what I did. And this is the reason that I don't buy it by the gallon because by the time that I get done using a gallon, half of it will have evaporated and hardened where I can just buy it in a little package and uh, it'll last me for a long time. Now I'm going to go ahead and put some glue up here. Those of you who are uh, flute makers out there or woodworkers who realize that this is going to be an area that I'm going to glue together with some other type of glue, it's okay to do this. Most of your other glue types will stick to a piece of solidified 
uh, super glue in wood so long as you sand it before you, you glue it. So that was one of my major concerns when I first started doing this. Uh, just worried about whether or not uh, the regular tight bond glue that I use, which is just a wood glue, whether it's going to stick to this. And tight bond, though it, it boasts that it sticks to a lot of things, I trust it with wood a great deal. So you have to be careful. And you can see right here, I didn't leak that out, that's where the crack of the knot is, and it soaked through the side. Now, I expected to have seen some of it come through here, but what it amounts to is this part of the knot is harder than this outside part of the knot, which tells me, just by looking at it, that this was an outside piece of the wood, or getting closer to the outside piece of the wood than the other piece was. You can see the little shape and discoloration of the knot right there, which tells me that it's hard, but this other piece tells me that it's probably soft, and of course not for long because this super glue will harden it up just fine. The super glue or cyanocrylic glue or you know whatever you want to call it um, actually is harder than wood so in many ways you'll come out with something right there that's shinier than the wood which is nice. Uh, now this is a flute that we've already started it's not finished yet and has a little sanding and it needs to be done with it of course as you can see and there's a few scratches from the lathe because we stopped this at a point and um, try to catch these things and then put it back on the lathe and go go from there. There are some pits Whereas I was talking on that other piece of wood, had already starting, started the uh, decomposition process and there's a real visible crack right there. Now for a wind instrument, this is definitely not a good thing because anywhere there are air escapes, the uh, air will allow the, um, the flute to create turbulence inside. Even if it plays, the turbulence will really, in, in I guess metaphorically, discolor the notes is what I'm trying to say. It'll cause the notes to sound a little airy at times, but the thing that it really does is it throws them out of whack. So if there's a knot here, and there's fingerings right here, and some down here, these may tune out differently than these up here will, and then once the knot is sealed, they would tune completely differently. So that's why we've got to be careful with this. Now, I chose this piece to show you because there's an obvious pit right there, and then over here, there's another obvious pit. I'll try to turn it to where you can see it better on the camera. Those pits are something that we need to deal with as well. And there's some different ways to do that. What I'm going to do first is put a little bit of this glue on it so it'll start soaking in. Now I might mention too, this glue process with wood definitely needs adequate ventilation. The vapors that come off of any kind of cyanacrylate glue will um, burn your eyes, burn your nose, and of course not to mention that the glue will stick your fingers together, but most people probably know that. The glue though, let me wipe this little run. Okay. The glue here, as it combines with the carbon in the wood, causes a like a chain reaction, and that's that's a problem. So what I'm going to use is some sawdust that I saved from sanding these flutes, and it's a color match. So that's why I'm going to use this. I'm just going to rub it in there. Now while I'm doing this, of course, I am getting a little glue on my fingers. You might want to wear gloves. We're kind of used to it here in the shop, and though it's probably not a good thing, we just scrub it off down the road. So put some on, put some more glue, put some more sawdust. The finer the sawdust, the better. Big chunks don't fill up small pores very easily. And then if you have something you can kind of spackle it in there with, I'm using my finger like a dummy, but that's what works. Don't use your fingers. Oh, don't be a dummy. <laughs> uh, you'll notice too that we have different colors of sawdust. We have some red cedar sawdust here. This is uh, from the western cedar that you're looking at, so that's what color their sawdust looks like. And then um, the one that we use a lot of, especially around knot holes, is uh, carbonized wood. And this doesn't matter what type of wood it is, usually harder the better, but um, this is a combination of pine, western cedar, red cedar, um, you know, walnut, I don't know what else we might have been running in our planer the day, but we save all of our uh, sawdust from our planer, and the sawdust are in much larger chunks than this, of course. I'll open this container up to show you, but we save it, and um, 
we use it to fire clay whistles with. And these are pieces of carbonized, very small little pieces of wood. You can see that these all come from my dust collector, sometimes out of my planer, out of router tables, um, anywhere the, the lathe, anywhere that we have dust that we collect, we save the wood from it in our dust collector. And then we burn this um, as a carbonizing medium and also uh, as a air control in our um, firing process of our clay whistles, which I promise we'll be making more clay whistle videos here very, very soon. But you can tell that some of this are little pieces of wood. It will all, because it's carbonized, it will all finely powder. If you're careful, you can just kind of crumble it up until really fine powder instead of leaving it so coarse. And I find that mixing the sawdust with about 50-50 um, of this carbonized wood shavings and carbonized wood makes a much better sealer than anything does as far as uh, uh, using it as a fill or something that's going to be more of a permanent fixture somewhere. Uh, the color will help match a little bit better. And it also helps to, to grade the texture of the carbonized sawdust, um, mixing fresh sawdust in there with it. Of course, as I had mentioned, the chemical reaction with actual wood pulp and cyanacrylate glue is uh, a little different than the, uh, you know, the chemical reaction with the actual sooted uh, sawdust, the stuff that's been carbonized. Um, so, you know, there's a little bit of, of help in there as far as building a, a stronger structure. This stuff here really works. And plus it helps to blend the color out a little bit as well. Uh, one other thing I was going to show you. Let's see, well, here's one that I saved to show you that had been sealed before the flute was even put together. This crack had been sealed. Once it's finished sanding, then um, it'll look just like a, a natural piece of the wood. It's actually pretty, pretty good looking, and it's solid. It's something that should last the lifetime of the flue without difficulty. As I mentioned, the um, glue area is actually harder than the wood itself. And here's some more down here at the bottom. Red cedar is something that sometimes cracks for no reason it seems. It's because of how uh, the moisture and oils evaporate out of it. But what I'm going to show you last, just to finish up here, is a small drone flute that's in the very early stages of production, not, not really close to being completed. There is a crack right here in the wood that goes way down. And then here's a spot that is just missing. So here's a knot that's missing, and then there's, uh, here, excuse me, here's the knot, and there's a piece of the knot that's missing, not to mention a chunk of the knot here that's missing as well. So a couple of things to think about. This is what you can do to seal up bigger areas. Um, as, once again, as long as you're careful, this stuff all has to be handled as if it's a toxic chemical. Even though it's sold everywhere, I like to be very careful with it. So what I've done is I've outlined the wood where the hole is there and I'm trying to decide what I should fill it with I think I'm going to fill it with my mixture here because the mixture um, I guess more or less resembles a knot in color because knots are usually darker and they usually um, tend to discolor so it's not too much of a problem now there's one of the chunks of wood Usually I crush this stuff up a little bit finer than I did on this particular batch. But in this case, that chunk of wood, of carbonized wood, actually helped to seal the hole. So that's kind of a, a good thing. We'll just fill this up a little bit more. And it's best, if you're doing this, to try to get it to mound over. One thing you want to be aware of is if you push it, it'll go down inside of the flute and it will um, start poking through the inside and you'll have to sand that off as well which is not really a bad idea but uh, it's just more work just to let you know and then here's one spot here now this is more of a light color so I think I'm going to stick with the original western cedar color there and honestly if depending on the grade and quality of crazy glue or super glue you're using you might be able to sand this within just a few minutes. The one thing I've noticed is that the uh, sooted sawdust here mixed with the other sawdust sometimes takes a moment or two to dry. It's actually the, the carbonized wood that takes the longest to dry uh, with the super glue. Once it is dry, it's, it's a hard little black rock, which is nice. Um, in the meantime, we can go ahead and put some in the crack here. 
and just kind of outline this crack from start to finish. If you see, that sucker goes way up there, don't it? It's following some of the natural curvature of the grain of the wood, which means that this crack may have been existent during the tree's formation and didn't really open up enough until recently. Or it could just be breaking along one of the fault lines of the seams, or excuse me, one of the grain uh, lines there, because there is a matter of harder and softer wood in those as well. We're going to do that. Now that alone kind of seals it up, but I'm going to go ahead and use a little clamp on it. This is one of my drone clamps that I usually use. Let's see. It's for our drone flutes. That's why it has a leather padding on it. Let's see. Over here. This clamp here is really old and strong. It's super glue. You might can see the fumes coming off of it. My camera person is unfortunately downwind of it, so it's going back that way. Very stinky stuff. But it definitely works. It's wonder. Now, this is probably a two or three minute process. I've already checked the black and it's hard, so in just a moment here, we can take this to the sander and I'll, I really wanted to show you how it finishes out. So it's dry and this little seam here is dry as well. The good thing about pushing the seam back together is it helps to strengthen the wood if it's holding together. I could have filled that seam with sawdust and just let it be, but in this case, squeezing it back together helps to get the wood fibers to, to kind of reattach a little bit. There's still a little hole in there, which I'm probably going to go back after we're done with the video and, and fill it a little bit more. Um, and sometimes if you just drop super glue on it and let it sit there, um, it'll solidify and you'll have a solid piece. This piece I'm very happy with and I think it's turned out good as well as back here. So if you want to watch me sand it for just a second, let's see what it looks like when it's done. sand in here this guy here should be really good now of course anytime that you use sandpaper on a knot you've got to go down really fine because the sandpaper uh, the knot has unusual grain and of course sanding cross grain usually leaves some visible lines this little crack that I was worried about looks like it has disappeared what I'm gonna do next is go back and just seal it up a little bit more with some um, super glue there so that it's done but the crack along this line is very good looking very promising looks like it's solid from now on if there are any pits in the crack, and you can check this with some bright light to see if there's any any uh, little valleys in there, then you'll want to go back and do this one more time until they're completely solid. But I know there's a crack up here. I'm going to actually be cutting this flute off, so I won't have to worry about it. But you can see what this looks like. I think I'll grab a piece of fine paper real quick. It sounds like the fishing birds are talking to me again. Anyway... We can do some fine sanding on this, and I believe we'll have quite a quite an improvement. Now, most of you that know our flute making process realize that we oil and wax all of our flutes, and you're probably thinking to yourself, "Well, will the oil and wax cause any kind of problem with this type of fill?" No, not at all. Actually, enhances it, makes it look pretty neat. This one on the back side here turned out really great. It just looks like a dark spot in the in the wood knot. But now that the knot is sealed as well, I think we'll have a better, better result in total. Because I'm not finished with this flute yet, I'm hesitant to oil it right away, but I do want to show you what it looks like. So let me grab some oil. I'm just going to put a dot of our oil mixture here on it just so you can see what happens when the oil touches it. Now the same thing would happen if you lacquered it or shellacked it, if that's the direction you're going with your woodworking. Um, that looks just amazing. This guy over here doesn't look bad at all in my opinion. It's uh, unusual, but it is a knot, you know. And I would go ahead and oil this one, but like I said, I need to go back and glue it, and oil and glue don't mix as well. It does work, but you know, it's best to do the glue when the wood is dry. 
So anyway, that's about it. I hope this has helped you all out a little bit, whether it be just general woodworking, furniture making, furniture repair. I've done a lot of those things in my life. Or uh, Native American flute making, if that's where you're going. Uh, honestly, I've used this process to repair everything from turtle shells to uh, <laughs> car tires. So, you know, there's, there's ways to do it. Um, once again, this is Charlie Montotiello from Blue Bear Flutes. We have videos on flute making of every sort. And, uh, you know, those of you who have uh, bought and ordered flutes from us, thank you so much for joining the Blue Bear Flutes family. We appreciate you a great deal. And uh, our flute making book is available as well. As a little message coming up, we'll tell you. Y'all take care. Have a great day. Happy flute making, flute playing. And for you furniture makers out there, you'll probably think about it very soon, I'm sure, as well. Take care. Thank you guys very much for watching our videos. We appreciate you greatly. We wouldn't do this if it wasn't for you watching. Um, I would like to ask you, if you get a chance, please subscribe to our YouTube channel because it helps to uh, keep everything going smooth here. Plus, you'll get the newest videos that we have uh, ready for you to see when they come out. So that's kind of a nice little thing there. Uh, I would like to remind you, if you have wanted to make Native American flutes or really any kind of musical instruments, especially flutes, um, that our book here, The Art of Native American Flute Making by Charlie and Jesse Montotuiella is really a great way to keep up with that. It's got everything from schematics inside for different fingerings, where to place the holes. It's in metric as well as in the U.S. Uh, and English standard, as we call it. Uh, it's even got some little trip, uh, tricks and tips on how to uh, get the air channel to sound right, which is something that in the Native American flute world is one of the probably considered to be one of the most difficult things to do. But if it's that, or you just want to learn how to make something really unique and interesting, there's a lot of that in there too. That and a lot more. But anyway, I thank you guys again for watching our videos. If you would subscribe to us, join the Blue Bear Flutes family, and uh, we appreciate you very much. Y'all take care.